Tom here from Modern Systems, and we're going to go through how to set up a privacy VPN with PFSense and then do selective policy routing for different devices that are behind here to send them out different VPNs and then put a kill switch. And that way, if the VPN goes down, it doesn't lead to something such as one of those devices just going out your WAN. So we'll be covering all that. Everything's time indexed down below. We're going to be using OpenVPN with PIA. This is not a specific endorsement of PIA. I trust zero of these different privacy VPN companies. Matter of fact, a lot of people seem to have been oversold them because it's an easy thing to sell on the internet. So you'll see so many different YouTube channels and podcasts overhyping VPNs. And they are, well, not quite the security, but they're more about privacy. If you would like to hide your traffic from your ISP, or you would like to hide your public IP from a website or some web application you're using, that's generally what these are used for. As I said, I trust none of these companies. It's not an endorsement for PA, but if you're going to sign up for one, I do have an affiliate link down below, and that's as much advertising as I have for this video. This was not sponsored or endorsed, but hey, if you're going to use one, I said, why not sign up an affiliate link? Because I have been using privacy internet access for quite a while. I like the fact that a while back, they donated money to audit VPN and open source products, and I thought that was cool that they helped pay for the code audit, but I don't really have any good reason to use them or not to use them here, because as I just want to reiterate, one more time, I don't know the best company for this. Uh, I don't have any endorsements, recommendations, or sponsors on this particular video. All right, there'll be an accompanied forum post down below. And there's one last piece of advertising. If you want to learn more about me and my company, head over to LearnSystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. And yes, there's an affiliate link for PIA VPN. Now let's first start with this diagram. Specifically, I use diagrams.net. I've reviewed this tool before on my channel for doing drawings. And I want to explain how the privacy VPNs work. So we have our lab PFSense and we have two different Linux systems behind here on two separate subnets. I just wanted to have a couple different subnets to expand out the way this works so you can repeat it if you do have, as many people do, multiple networks. Now with the lab PFSense, the blue lines represent your normal path. So it goes here to the PFSense. From the PFSense, we are all doing this in a lab, so it has a private IP address, but normally you would have your WAN with a public IP address that's assigned to you by your ISP. And when you go to some online services, the online services will see your public IP address. Now with a privacy VPN, we take a little bit of a different approach because we use OpenVPN to create an encrypted tunnel. The ISP sees the encrypted tunnel and sees that you're using a privacy VPN. But because you're encapsulating all the data within an encryption tunnel, the only thing they know is that you went to the privacy VPN. And then the online services don't see your public IP address. They see whatever IP address was provided by the privacy VPN. Now, of note in here, we will talk about how to avoid DNS leaks. Um, that's pretty simple to avoid in here, but that is one more aspect where if you don't set this up properly, even though your encrypted tunnel traffic goes over here, your DNS queries can still go out over the public internet. So we will be covering that as well. And the kill switch is so if for some reason this connection goes down and you have one of these devices routing through the privacy VPN, it doesn't automatically start routing back out through your normal WAN. That can obviously cause some problems if you're trying to remain private and anonymous here. But of note, if you say, I don't trust my ISP and you've chosen to pay a privacy VPN to obscure you, that means you have to trust these VPNs. And this is one of the reasons I said I don't have any particular recommendation or any specific one that I say I trust wholeheartedly because all it really takes is the privacy VPN company to work with your ISP to tell whatever online service you connected to where this connection came from because the privacy VPN company knows your public IP address and the online services know the private IP address provided or public IP address provided by the privacy VPN. Therefore, in coordination, if these companies, although they swear to never have any logs, if they are subpoenaed or uh, hijacked, that is something that they would be able to provide. So just a heads up on that. I just want to make sure that part's really clear on what this actually does. All right. Now to get into the setup on here. Now I downloaded the PIA Switzerland 
OVPN file. This is something you can download right, right from Privacy Internet's website. I'll leave a link to their write-up and they have all the download links in there to make it easy so you don't have to search your site for it. But the first thing we need to do is put in a certificate. OpenVPN does use certificates to build trust. In order to have that trust, we're just pulling this out. You can also just download the .crt file from there. This is actually the whole OpenVPN file, but you can simply do it right here. We want to go from begin certificate to end certificate and we're going to do a copy. We get over here to our PF Sense. Now this is version 2.52 release. This is set up in my lab. And by the way, this system is not running PF Sense Plus, but it would be the same if I was using a NetGate device in PF Sense Plus. There's really no difference if you use PF Sense or PF Sense Plus for all the settings I'm going to be covering in this video. I'm going to go to Cert Manager, CAs, and we're going to go here and add descriptive name, PA. We're not going to get too creative here. Call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it PA. Then we're just going to paste that in over here and hit save. And if it doesn't give an error, it should work. Look, name, private internet access. And now we have the cert installed for PA. Now we can simply go over to the OpenVPN by going over here and going over to OpenVPN. And we're creating a client. Now, this is the part you have to really make sure you get right. And that's why I said I'll be documenting some of this in a forum post, but follow along here. And this is where people screw up the most is when they're going through and getting all these settings. Now I'll be pulling all the settings right from here. So this is going to be the Swiss privacy network on port 1198. You can actually create more than one of these and maybe create one for Swiss, one for another location. There's, you can just keep duplicating this and it will keep working that way. But we're just gonna be creating one for simplicity's sake, but you can actually have more than one on a PF Sense system. It was on port 1198. Very important to make sure you get the port right. Whoop. There we go. Uh, don't typo it like I just did. So these are really detailed. Go through each one of these steps and make sure you have everything in here that you need. Put the username. I have a PIA username here and throw in my password. And I guess I should probably give it a name here. Let's call this PIA VPN Swiss so we know which one in case I create another one later. So we've got the username, the password. We'll scroll down and we do not want to use the TLS key. So we're going to uncheck that. We can leave all of this the same except for this right here. Peer certificate authority needs to be PIA. We'll leave all these the same. All right, and let's scroll down a little bit further. And this is a really important box to check or you'll be scratching your head for a little while. Don't pull routes. By default, and this is specifically with PIA, but I imagine lots of other VPN companies do this, they are trying to be helpful. And if they pull routes, they will take and say, update the routing table inside of whatever device is connecting, in this case, PFSense, and it will change all your routing so everything from your PFSense goes out the VPN. Maybe that's the solution you're looking for, and that's fine, but you'll find quickly that if you try to squeeze everything over a VPN, you'll and not necessarily have the fastest internet and you may be adding a lot of latency that's why this is about policy routing and only the things we want going out over the privacy vpn so don't pull routes because we're going to design our own routes later in the video that's just an important aspect that you really want to have in here now all this can be left the same there's really not much to do here until we get to custom option options and i'll have these so you can easily paste them in or you can just put them in persistent key persistent ton remote cert dash tls server regen second and all three try interact this is just all some settings in case it goes down so it should hopefully connect faster for some disruption to the connection. Uh, so these are a the couple of custom options that they say to put in over from PIA. I put them in, didn't really have any problems with them. Uh, go ahead and put IPv4, then we're going to click save. All right, now that we saved it, the next step is, did it work? And quickest, easiest way to tell, you can read through the logs and scratch your head a little bit. I can see bytes sent, bytes received. I see an IP address assigned and it's working. And if you want it to reconnect again, I could just hit this right here and it would reestablish a connector or I can stop the particular OpenVPN service. We want it running. If you wanted to disable the VPN, you can actually go back over here, OpenVPN, client, edit and disable this client. But for now, we want it enabled. The next step is in order to use this as a gateway, we need to add it as a gateway. And pretty simple here, we're gonna go to interface assignments and right there, OpenVPN Swiss, click add, click on it. We'll call it 
PA Swiss. We're going to enable the interface. That's it. Just like this, no other settings really need to be set in here. Just leave it alone and hit apply. And this will give it another interface. Actually, I called it SWIC. Eh, cool. Fair enough. Let can I change it without reassigning it? It's enabled, but you may have noticed it says pending. When you add an interface, we're going to go here to OpenVPN, look at the status, and we're going to go ahead and just reload it. And what this does is reestablish OpenVPN, and now it will automatically get that IP address assigned there. When you add it and that you don't restart the OpenVPN service, you'll end up with a conflict. So I just want to make note to make sure you do that. So when we get back to this page here, which is going to think for a minute, uh, we'll get back to the page and you'll see the OpenVPN established working and the IP address assigned to it. And there we go. We've got this internal IP address assigned to it. Uh, it just connected, so it's going to show a little bit of packet loss. That's going to happen sometimes. You can also choose in different gateways to monitor to whether or not it goes down. We're going to go over here to routing. We're going to go ahead and set this so we always know that the default gateway is going to be the WAN DHCP or whatever your gateway is, the default gateway, not this one here. Then we're going to go and just edit. And you can change whatever the monitor IP is. We'll actually just choose 9.9.9.9, .9 which is just quad 9's DNS. Hit save apply that way it understands whether or not this gateway is down or up and what it's going to monitor but it's going to see rtt and rttsd is there so it's online it's working all right now for the next steps we go to firewall nat and this is where we create our outbound nat rules first make sure this is selected with hybrid nat outbound nat rule generation automatic plus rules these are the automatic rules down here at the bottom and we're going to add another rule Interface, PIA Swiss. We only really need IPv4 for this. And for each subnet you have, of which we have two on this system, you create the rule like so. So the first one was 22.0. Save. And we can actually just duplicate the rule. And the other one is 40.0. And repeat this if you have more networks than this. And it's only relevant to what networks you're going to be creating rules on. So if you only are ever going to create rules on that subnet, you only really need one rule. But that's just where that's created. So go ahead and hit Apply Changes. Now that those are created, now comes the firewall alias. And I like to do this as an alias because it simplifies things a bit. We have over here a computer at 192.168.22.100 and the goal is going to be to take it from where it shows in Auburn Hills or if we put country and this is just ifconfig.co if you curl it and put this command it'll tell you what country it thinks your IP address is if you omit country or city it just gives you the IP address so we have Auburn Hills here and United States so that's where it thinks I am technically I'm in Southgate Michigan but we'll call it close enough we're going to go ahead and add an alias and route out over PIA. Sounds like a good name. And these are simply devices that route over VPN. And we type in the IP address of each of those. Now doing this as an alias means it's really simple. Actually, it's uh, 22.100 is the first one some Linux machine, and we hit save. You could add as many hosts as you want and go down here. This is going to be a convenience factor if you want to dynamically move things in and out without having to edit the rules, but just change the aliases. You could throw something on there and right away it goes out over the VPN or delete it off there, hit refresh on the rules, and it goes away. So this is just a convenience factor. So you don't have to put this IP address in more than one time. Aliases are really convenient when you're building firewall rules. Now let's go build the rules. Now 22.100 was LAN 2. So you'll see it like right here. So 22.1, that's our LAN 2. So firewall rules and LAN 2. Firewalls rules are processed in PFSense from the top down. So we have an allow all rule down here, and we need to create a rule above that to be processed before that other rule. So we're going to hit add and hit the little up one. So it goes there, pass, land to IPv4, change this to any. A lot of mistakes are made when you use just TCP because, well, anything UDP or ICMP, etc. will not work. Um, 
So make sure that's switched over to any source network is going to be single host or alias. And we're going to use that alias that says route over PIA. Destination any, that's perfectly fine. And this is IP to be routed over PIA. Display advanced. And this is where we got to do some really specific things in here including st the beginning of our kill switch. We're grabbing this data and packets that come that match the ones that we want routed, and we want to add a tag to those packets. This tag is just used internally by PFSense. It doesn't do anything to the functioning of the TCP IP stack. It's not actually changing the packet, but it's adding a tag while the packet traverses the rules within PFSense. So we'll say private VPN only. Now, I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And actually, I'm going to spell it right and then copy it. So private VPN only, we're going to copy this tag, because it, unlike the aliases, they don't auto complete when you do the tags in here. So private VPN only, and we'll get to why we did that in a second. Then we're going to choose gateway, we don't want to go out the default gateway, we specifically want to go out the PIA Swiss VPN interface. So we're going to choose that and hit save. So this is how the rule looks. This rule grabs it and sends it out. IP to be routed over PIA. Now, the reason for adding the tag is because we're going to create a floating rule that is the kill switch. Now, I've seen some debates on the internet of different ways of doing it. The reason for doing it this way is because if you were to simply say, I'm going to route it and then put a block under it for going out the other gateway, well, the problem can be where PFSense will if you disable the VPN or something happens, a service stops and it loses the gateway, things can start routing back out the default gateway. So now we're going to create a floating rule to grab that tag traffic. So this always tags the traffic and when it goes over here to floating and we're going to hit add and we're going to create block rule and we're going to say block WAN any protocol any, not just TCP, display advanced. And then instead of the tag, we're going to paste in the tag name. So matching tagged private VPN only block if it makes an attempt to escape from the WAN address. It's really that simple. You're, you're just saying don't let it escape the WAN address here. So I actually go ahead and hit save and show you what the rule looks like. Save, apply. So if matches WAN, it's going to drop it. We should probably give it a name. I do highly encourage everything to get a description. Block the alias for VPN going out of well, over WAN. There we go. Just so you know what it's doing when we do this. So we hit save, and now you get an idea of what that rule does is hit apply. So if that sees a packet coming and it tries to go out, it's going to grab it and just stop it and throw it away. Of note, if you have more than one WAN, you may want to repeat this rule for each WAN you have or gateway group, however you may have configured it. This lab setup only has a single WAN, therefore we only create a single rule with just the WAN listed in here. Now the next question might be, does it work? And let's test it. So we're just going to hit an up arrow here. Curl, I have config country. And it thinks we're in Switzerland. Awesome. That's where it should think we are. And I'll show now because I can show the IP address, whatever IP address signed. It's 212.102.37.202. Now, what happens? And let's go ahead and forcibly fail OpenVPN. So we're going to go over here to OpenVPN and we'll go to the client and we'll just go ahead and disable it. So disable this client. Scroll all the way down to the bottom here, hit save, and this will cause it to no longer have a VPN. No VPN instance defined. What happened to our lab system here? If we curl ifconfig, actually nothing. It's just going to lock up because the packets have nowhere to go. Now we're going to go back over here to firewall rules and we look at the floating. We see 240 bytes because it sent some packets, you know, doing some requests and they have nowhere to go because this rule grabbed them and said, nope, because this is what it would have tried to do is try to go out the WAN. So pretty simple. One thing of note here, if we go to our OpenVPN and clients, and we're going to go ahead and re-enable this client, hit save. So the VPN should be established. It establishes relatively quick. There we go. Go back over here, control C because it hasn't timed out yet. Hey, still not working. Wonder why. 
what happens is because we completely disabled OpenVPN, if you have this problem, or you can go over here to status and we want to go to filter reload and we want to reprocess the rules. All this is is going through and grabbing and refreshing all the rules because we disabled it and it actually would have broken that interface because it was completely disabled that we assigned and we reassigned it. It needs the rules to be reloaded in order to grab them, and put them all back in. This is not something that happens if the VPN connection drops necessarily. This won't cause an issue. Matter of fact, let's just go ahead and confirm it's working. Hey, look, we even got a different IP address now this time. But for example, if we go over to VPN, open VPN status, and we actually reestablish the connection just by doing this. It may get a different IP address again. We'll find out here in a second. And we got the same IP address, but without doing a rule refresh, this should still work. It's going to take a second to requeue the states. And there we go. We're actually, let's clear the screen. Do it again so you can see it's up and running and working. I didn't have to reload the rules a second time. And if we say country, it still thinks I'm in Switzerland on this particular device. It's only if the interface gets disabled, reloading the filters, just an FYI in case you do something like that. Now, this is an optional thing you can do here is go to service watchdog. This is a service you can install. So it's one of the packages under package manager. I've already installed it. You go to service watchdog and you can add OpenVPN as a service. When you add a new service, you'll see all the different ones in here. And what Service Watchdog does is watch OpenVPN or whatever you specify, and actually it'll watch each client you set up. And if it sees the service, it stopped. Not necessarily disconnect because it's set to auto reconnect if for some reason something happens or someone at PIA reboots the server, it'll auto reestablish a connection. But if the service itself for some reason goes down, you can actually just tell Service Watchdog, hey, just restart that. I haven't really seen this to be a huge issue. It's more of a safety net just in case. So those things keep on running in case the OpenVPN service for some unknown reason quits. You can just tell it to do this. I have on rare occasions seen it just get stuck, but it's so infrequent where I don't know why it gets stuck. That's basically, I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen once every few months, maybe, but not enough where I can really figure out the why, but the service watchdog will restart the service. And I've never happened on my computers. It's just clients have told me they've seen this and comments I've seen in different forum posts. So I would say this is optional, but I usually, if I see a service failing, I want to first be notified of that service failing. So I'll have it send me notifications so I can investigate usually a bigger why. But I'll just mention that this is in here in case you're looking for something to restart the service. Now, one quick and final note is we're going to go back over here to our firewall rules. And I mentioned we did this on LAN 2 because that one device we have on here, which we only added one right now, was on LAN 2. But we also still have our regular LAN. The quickest way to get this over it would be to hit the copy button on the rule, change this to this one here, scroll down the bottom, hit save. Now we're over on LAN. As I said, the rules are processed top down. So you always want to make sure it catches this rule first. So that IP address hits this and goes out that gateway. Hit apply. Actually, I got to drag it, save, then apply. All right, now I got the rule order right. And that's it. Now I've added it to this other LAN. If you had five other ones provided, you also have an outbound net rule for each one of these. That's how you would duplicate it. That way, all you have to do is go back over here to the aliases. And if we wanted to add the other system, we could just edit this alias, add a host, put in the IP address of each host we want in there. And subsequently, if you wanted to take that host out, you would just delete it. And the moment you hit save on this, apply changes, reloads the rules. And now that one is processed as well on the VPN or off the VPN, depending on however you want to set it up. Now, hopefully this video gave you a better understanding of how policy routing works in PFSense, how to use a privacy VPN. As I said in the beginning, I don't have any particular recommendations for one, but if you want to sign up for one and help the channel out, there is the affiliate link for PIA down below. I will have a forum link to have a more in-depth discussion on this particular topic because there's always questions or some whys. And I try to explain the whys as best as I can, but well, that's why the forums are for to have a little bit more in-depth and talk about different scenarios or maybe some other unique scenarios that you have. That'll be linked down below in the description, along with the other things I talked about, such as the PIA right up on this topic. Thanks. And thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. 
If you'd like to hire a sure project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you.